before an uh, epic battle on the football field, I want to talk about an epic battle in mathematics. It's between Morse, actually associated to Harvard because he taught at Harvard, he was a Harvard graduate, and uh, Lustenich Schneerman, who were Russian mathematicians and uh, fine mathematicians who had uh, proven some fantastic results like in uh, differential geometry about geodesics. So uh, they proved, for example, that if you have something like a sphere, if you have a sphere, there are always three geodesics on it, which is a little bit surprising. You have difficulty proving this kind of in an easy way, like on a donut, just by taking, if I put a rubber band here around. In general, the question of how many geodesics there are in a specific manifold is very, very interesting. <coughs> So uh, Morse's theory also started with uh, problems in uh, mechanics. Mo Morse was very interested in uh, practical problems. He was uh, also working during, he was even in the war, he was even fighting in the war, the First World War, and he was also working on war projects. So the very, very uh, down-to-earth mathematician, very creative. Is Morse's theory stronger than Lustenich Schneerman theory, which is a more topological version. So uh, I want to dedicate this to Frank Lucellis, who uh, was a great friend of mine in uh, college. He was a, uh, in grad school and uh, he was a master of both theories. So he wrote a nice thesis on Hamiltonian systems, which are of this type, right? If the type of, uh, so when you have the, the manifold is a, a torus and you have the cotangent bundle on a, on a torus. He used both uh, Lucenich Schneerman theory and also uh, Morse theory. So first of all, what is the definition of the category? So if you have a if you have a manifold and can be a, any uh, metric space, you want to see how many contractible parts do you need to cover it. So that's uh, very much related to the topological dimension. And actually, uh, an early result of Lustenich and Schneerman, they collaborated later, but category is smaller or equal than the dimension of A plus one, essentially kind of close to the definition. And they also proved that the category of the product of K, of K uh, compact manifolds is bigger or equal than K plus one. So for example, if you take a donut, a donut is the product of two one-dimensional manifolds, their category is at least three. And uh, actually it is equal to three because you can cover the donut. I just unwrapped the donut here. So this is identified with that, this is identified with that, and you can take three cards, three contractible sets which cover the whole thing. For a sphere, of course, you need two. That's a prototype where you only need the, the categories uh, uh, two. Thing that's related to analysis, calculus, when you look at the number of the minimal number of critical points which you can have on a, on a manifold. So uh, you know, there are two kind of different notions. So the cre, cre m, that's the number of minimal number of critical points which you can you know realize. That's actually here three. So you can actually you can find on a on a donor functions. Of course, one of the points will be degenerate. Uh, uh, because when you look at Morse's theory. Then you have a, you have a, generically also you have a you have a non-degenerate function a function where all the critical points are non-degenerate the d which we have in calculus is not zero or the uh, the Hessian has has is not is is, is invertible invertible matrix that happens here for the height function and then you have uh, four critical points so the, the the number the minimal number of critical points here for Morse functions is four. So there is a, a, a nice inequality, Morse inequality, which is relating the number of critical points, non-degenerate critical points with, com with cohomology, which is the, the Betty numbers. So here are the Betty numbers, which you can compute. These are you know, <coughs> topological quantities, which are nice. And so uh, one of the consequences of that by just, you know, taking uh, differences between such inequalities, you get that the number of critical points is bigger or equal than the, the case 50 number. 
this is really, really powerful and nice because you can bound the Betty numbers from by realizing functions here. So if you have a, actually on the sphere, what we have is there's, there's no, uh, you can realize a function which has no critical point of index one. Right? So this is index two, this is index zero, this is a maximum, this is a minimum, and there is nothing between. So we know that the Betty number, the first Betty number is zero. And we can bound that the zero Betty number bound by one, and the second is bound by one, and actually that's what you really have. B zero is equal to B two is one, B one is equal to zero. By Poincaré duality, we have that. So it's it's kind of a, a way. This Morse theory is a way to actually compute some cohomology. Here also, what you have is actually what you what you see the the B one, right? The B one has to be the B1 has to be smaller or equal to 2 because we can realize a function which has two critical points of index 1. It's a very, very powerful uh, thing, this Morse theory. But also category theory is, is nice. So this is the theorem here. So we have a, a relation also between cohomology, the category, and the number of critical points. But these are now critical points which can be degenerate. The cup length is the minimal number of cohomology classes uh, which are of degree one or more, which add up to have uh, uh, something non-zero. So what we have, for example, for the donut, we have the cup length is two, because we can have two cohomology classes, one, one which goes around like that, one which goes around like that, and uh, when you take the product of these two, you get something non-zero, you get actually the volume for. And here, what happens here, so in this case, the cup length is one, so you have a, you have no, the only cohomology class which you can look is the volume form here. So there are no one forms here, so the cup length is one, and then, so in this case, this is all sharp. These inequalities are sharp in these two cases. It's not always sharp, but in this case, it's sharp. So the category here is, for, for here is three, critical points is the cup length is two. Here, uh, the cup length is one, the category is two, and the crit uh, minimum number of critical points is also two. So this is very useful because it, again, gives you critical points. And critical points are in mechanics, not, not only the equilibria, but it's actually solutions of, say, periodic solutions of the system, solutions of uh, uh, geodesics, geodesic flow, it's also Hamiltonian system, and you have a, of a periodic, if you want to write down periodic solutions, this is a critical point of the of the length functional, which you have. So this is, these are all kind of infinite dimensional. So there is some uh, some beauty also here, and uh, so I like this uh, Lucenich-Neurman theory also, even so at the moment, of course, uh, Morse theory is much, much, much more strong. Uh, it has been de developed much further, and uh, especially with the uh, Morse cohomology and uh, Fleur theory and stuff like that. By the way, that was kind of, that was, uh, Fleur was actually just at, also sometimes at ETH when we were grad students, and uh, so he was always hanging around, and I tried to avoid him because this kind of, if you have a, such a genius then <laughs> around you, this is uh, this is demotivating, and actually some of the students in that in that area at that time really had, I think, a little bit of difficulty because of that tsunami, which was a, a flare. Also, Frank Uzel is actually never uh, managed to uh, secure a postdoc uh, position. So even so, he made fine mathematics, but I think it just paled. Uh, uh, when you compare with uh, what Fleur did. Uh, maybe I just should mention this kind of the one of the motivations to study all these, actually both sides, is uh, an open problem in Hamiltonian dynamics. So what you have is if you have a symplectic manifold, so what you can look at is Hamiltonian system. If you have a Hamiltonian, you have a, you have a nice dynamical system. And X prime is J gradient of H, which is a nice Hamiltonian system. And if you make it time dependent, say time one uh, uh, dependent, uh, then this system here has, uh, you're looking at the time one map, which produces symplectic maps. And this symplectic map can have fixed points. And you're interested in the number of fixed points. How many fixed points can you have minimally? 
and I call this here just M of M. That's the minimal number of fixed points which you can realize with such a system. And the strong Arnold conjecture tells that this is bounded below by the critical number, minimal number of critical points here, non-degenerate. It's an open problem, uh, wide open, it seems. Uh, but there is a, a weaker version if you just make this inequality, just when you look at the sum of the Betty numbers, that's the, that has been established essentially by Fleur, just look at some degeneracy, non-degeneracy condition, but this has been improved over, over time. And I think the last article which I saw is 2021. And uh, so that's the Morse part. But then there is also on the lustavik schneerman part, there is a, a, a conjecture is that the, the number of, you can also ask whether it's bounded by the non you know, non necessarily degenerate, uh, uh, can be also degenerate critical points. And then there is also a weak version, which is just asking the whole thing with a, uh, in terms of the lustavik schneerman uh, category. So that's a parallel world. Well, uh, let's see who wins. Let's see who wins the game today. That's it for today.